I see it's 3.05, so why don't we just start, and uh, we s I'm guessing we'll have a, ultimately a smaller group, so we've been chatting a little bit, but we'll just start over and chat again some more. <laughs> Everyone can just do the little two-minute hello. Um, get my little thing out here, my timer. And what did President Trump do? There we go. Um, so, I'm just going to start with Lori again. So we see we're already talking. Lori from Arlington. Yes. Uh, it helps me practice cities, too. Um, uh, Lori's uh, starting for a, or getting ready for a, a fundraiser. So take it away, Lori. How is it, how is it going in your neck of the woods? Yeah, so... Um... Lori at Arlington Independent Media, W-E-R-A-L-P. And uh, like, if you joined in at the beginning, uh, Stephanie and I were just kind of talking about what was going on here. We're trying to plan a little further ahead um, our fundraising calendar. Um, you know, there's just two of us full time here, so we have to um, use volunteers. And that's, that's a new thing for us. Um, but so far, it, it's going well. You know, we're settling into uh, COVID and all of that, and you know, anxiously awaiting vaccine appointments and stuff like that. But um, you know, we're just getting creative and doing things that we, in the past, weren't necessarily resistant to, or just you know, it was harder for us to to innovate. So uh, it's been kind of cool to to find new things to try out. And one of the things, one of the newer things that we're going to do is a text to donate, which um, I had asked about on the NFCB list. And it seems a lot of people use Give Lively and we had already signed up for that. We haven't used it before, um, but that's, I think that's going to be something that we try out for the first time uh, this spring. So that's awesome. That's my Man. focus right now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do want to share with us after your fundraiser how it goes, that would be great. Because yeah, I think definitely. fundraising is kind of an ongoing topic that's good to return to because there's always new ways people are doing it, and especially in COVID. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we all have to get a little more creative. People um, aren't giving as much as they used to because it's harder. You know, people are laid off and bills are a little bit different. So we have to appeal in a different way. Um, so I'm always happy to share what what's worked and what hasn't. Yeah, I would love that. Um, well, why don't you pass it on to the next person? I see Paul joined us. Hi, Paul. I will pass it on to Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. I went into the other room. Oh, that's okay. How are you doing in New York? We're doing okay. It's a bright sunny day and I'm not enjoying the sunshine because I'm, I'm glued to my TV today. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> um, well, if that's it for you, you can pass it on to the next person. Also for your courtesy to the house managers as we come over here. Can you see faces where you are, Cynthia? Say that again. Can you see the other faces of the people in the meeting? Yeah. Do you want to pass it on to somebody? Uh, okay, let me put my glasses on. <laughs> okay. I'll pass it on to... Sorry, sorry. I'll pass it on to Ursula. To do Perfect. Oh, hi. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, hi, I'm Ursula, and I think everybody here knows me. Um, really cold here in Iowa, and um, I'm happy to see all of you. And, you know, we've been busy with the broadcast of the impeachment hearings, and um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how your text to donate goes. We we had a few years here at KHOI and um, couldn't really get anybody to use it. And I'm curious to hear, you know, what you 
conclusion we came to with it was that it's really something better to use for an event to get people to donate during an event. But we found that when we gave it out over the air, it just kind of confused people a little bit. And we ended up terminating it because it was costing us money and we weren't getting anything. So I'm, I'm curious what happens to you and if you have any tips on how to make that work. Yeah, I think um, we're uh, we're planning some sort of like gala type event, virtual, of course, and I think that was yeah, yeah. What we were going to use it in association with. So I'll 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 definitely let you know if yeah, we I'll decide to use it and what happens with it. Yeah. Um, I'll pass it on to Joseph. Have you spoken? No, I'm I'm speechless. I'm Joseph Orozco. I'm up here in KIDE, Hoopa, Hoopa, California. It's raining here. It's, it's pretty. It's not freezing, but it's it's cold enough that you don't want to get wet. Um, um, it, it's uh, still waiting for them to hire another manager to replace me, as I'm now the the producer slash mentor, and I did that so I can mentor the new manager. So. Yeah. To know all you people and other people, and if they're not from our area, then they'll need to be introduced to uh, the travel departments. Uh, there's like over 40 of them. So there's a, there's a broad network that we operate in, and we have three staff right now. And I would be the well, the new manager would make the fourth staff. I'm, I guess I'm kind of like the fourth. I know. And then I plan because of. Uh, the tribal council was uh, finally listened and start paying our station engineer, which I was paying out of CPB funds. Now that opened up those funds. So now like I hired another person. Yay. Train that person. That's part of my mentoring type of uh, operation. Cause I'm, I'm going to retire in 2023. That's my plan. September 30th, but not sooner. So that's how it's going to turn out and I'm looking forward to uh, going on my own in media and see what else I could do so I, I, uh, I like these sessions these round tables and we're involved in the community counts initiative with NFCB I think we're in our third session with them right now so that, that's pretty interesting I, my goodness a lot of work on that one but uh, it's a good learning tool you know? So if we could leverage that, that'd be nice. So I will pass it on to um, Paul. You came in next. Hi, thanks, Joseph. And I'm sitting over in your land with sharing the rain with you. I'm on the road. I'm with KZFR in Chico, California. And um, we're full power station. I was on the board. Uh, Can everyone make sure that Turned off too, please, if you're not talking. Thank you. Yeah, in, in 99 through 2004, and then I've been back on the board for a couple of years. Um, we have uh, a couple of big things going on at the station right now that we're in the midst of. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll put it out to all of you because I know this um, group pretty well. Um, I, we could use some legal advice on a labor issue. Um, otherwise, I really like these uh, forums as well. Um, there's always a lot of good sharing that goes on. Cool. Thank you, Paul. Uh, do you want to turn it over to somebody? Oh, yeah. Um, the president's becoming king. become kings and despots. Did they put the oath of office right into the Constitution? They inscribed it into the Somebody's got their TV running. Can you mute them? Oh, uh, it might be Cynthia. Cynthia, can you mute your microphone? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. So, Thank so you. Uh, we're doing okay here. We're um, still getting new people coming on to do shows. We're working with two new shows. We got a um, we got a two hundred and fifty dollar um, contribution or donation 
from Hong Kong last weekend. They were listening to our station in Hong Kong, which we found very encouraging. <laughs> and uh, that's that, awesome. Yeah, it was. And they, 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 so it's, it's a uh, classic rock show that the guy does. He's got really good taste in it. And he's your, he's that typical kind of 60s or 70s DJ that you would have had back then, just, just really understanding the music. So that was good. And, and the con contributor said that they just really needed to hear that kind of programming, given the situation the world is in. So, um, so we're doing we're doing pretty good here. Nice. No complaints. Okay, let's see. We have uh, Steve Greenfield. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, as I'm, I'm on my phone for the first time, and I have no idea how mute buttons work on this thing or anything like that. <laughs> um, all right. Um, I un unfortunately can't really stay with this call for the duration. Um, I had to do some things and, you know, I get called for a fire department <laughs> activity. So um, things are still a little more compressed today. I guess I just want to um, ask if I can get um, subscription information to how to get on the listserv to help promote the new program I'm doing. I just uploaded this morning at about 10 15 or 10.30, what is the fourth 58-minute segment? I have been uh, doing my best to um, fulfill the format recommendations that are that are on the Pacifica site. Um, I've gotten some extremely good feedback on it. I have it um, up in video format, uh, which is how I record it on, on YouTube, and I convert to MP3 for the, for the radio. Um, you know, it's getting a very, very favorable response. I, I do believe that it is, um, that it presents an unusual perspective that doesn't try to um, straddle any particular kind of center, um, nor takes a, um, a, a sort of a left-right position, as I've discussed um, on earlier meetings, um, that my perspective, the best way to accomplish things is on an issue by issue basis and try to find common ground with people on an issue rather than on your whole broad ideology, uh, which we know is impossible and probably not even to be encouraged in a, in a, in a, in a pluralistic society, in a society that, that believes it finds strength and change um, in, in pluralism. So I would just like to ask if anybody, you know, it's called This Is Who We Are. It's up on the, um, up on the page. The fourth episode is up, and I, I would just like to ask people to give it a shot. I think it's been uh, consistently downloaded by just one station, um, one of the episodes. And, and again, if I could get login information on how to work the listserv, then I would do a little bit more, be a little more proactive on my, by, on my own, try to reach out and, and get it done. But um, uh, busy beyond that, um, I still think, as I said the first time that I met all of you, is, is that uh, we are... Um, existing right now, living through times uh, where an alternative perspective is, um, you know, as essential as it's been at any time in our history. The general media and political system is is locked down into uh, two frameworks that compete with each other instead of competing with the forces of nature and the world, uh, like a civilization should. And I appreciate that Pacifica is still out there and that you're all doing the work you're doing. Thanks, Steve. And I can I can definitely help you with your um, wanting to get on the listserv. I just need your email and I can put you on it and you can um, announce your show every week or whenever you have a new episode. Sure, that would be great. And, I, you know, I don't mind putting it out right here on the call because it's not a secret. I've been using it for years. It's bicycle sax, like the transportation and the saxophone. One word, bicycle sax at earthlink.net. Earthlink.net. All right. As soon as we're done with the call, you'll be on the list. Appreciate it. Thank you. Steve, yeah. If you, Steve, if you also um, a description of your show, a general description of your show, and um, a little bit about yourself and the day and time that your show is uploaded regularly, I'll send out also an introductory email kind of introducing you as a new show. Great, I appreciate that. Um, can I handle that with you by email? The, the... Yeah, send it to Ursula at Pacifica.org. Yeah, you got it. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you. I will. Sure. And I'll put it in the newsletter too. For when we have new shows, I always put it in the newsletter. So. 
There you go. Um, let's see. Get everybody. Oh, Mercedes. Mercedes was here. She's still here. Uh, maybe she had to leave. Oh, she's coming back. <laughs> okay. And Paul, can you remind me what city you're from again? Yeah, Chico, California. Oh, you're um, in Chico. So okay. Mercedes yes. is coming on. And, and Mercedes, too. Okay. Yeah. Chico. Are you there, Mercedes? Yeah. There you are. You came at just the right time. It's, it's your turn to say hi. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I am the president of the board of directors at KZFR in Chico, Northern California. And what else are we saying, Stephanie? <laughs> Um, we're just doing little two minute hellos. And if there's something that you wanted to talk about today, you can throw that out there too. Oh, okay. Um, I might be on and off like I was earlier. Um, I'm helping a friend out post surgery. Um, so I'll be in and out. But uh, yeah, what we're going through at KZFR right now is succession planning. Um, we will eventually be transitioning to a different general manager. So it's big times for the station and all of the details of that entail. <laughs> that's all I'll say. I've been on the board for two and a half years now. Okay. Thanks, Mercedes. I hope your friend is doing okay. <laughs> um, well, with that, why don't we go back to Paul? You said you, was it a legal question that you had? Oh, yeah, it, it is, but I, I would have to take it privately. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Stephanie? Yes. I've got a question for Steve. Okay. If that's okay. Well, is it related to rate running a radio station? Not really. I'll ask Thank him you. privately then. Okay. <laughs> um, does anyone else have anything they want to start off with? Well, I'm, I'm happy to announce we have a new network member. Uh, WLTL, which is in uh, right outside of Chicago in Illinois. And it's a uh, radio, it's a full power station uh, run by students at a high school. And they affiliated today. So that's nice to have a new member. It's nice to have a student run station too. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. How did they hear about uh, you know, I didn't ask them. Excuse me, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, uh, anyone else want to start uh, something on your mind that you want to talk about today? Maybe we get that station manager on our in these calls too. If we, if what? The person that Earth. Oh, the one from the high school. High school. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. We need to get you a station manager, Joseph. Yeah, yeah. You've been waiting I'm, a long I'm, time I'm, to get yeah, him. Game, yeah. Stacked up with stuff <laughs> to do. That's why I've been missing these calls. I'm, oh, I'm you're doing like two jobs time. now. Yeah. Um, anything else people are thinking about that you want to throw out there for some feedback? If nothing else, who's got some favorite shows, favorite new shows? That's a good one. That's always a good one to go to. You uh, you guys did that last no, night for your... No, we didn't have your, that many uh... people. So, so, oh, so okay. you know, I didn't hear a whole bunch of... We only had about nine people. Well, why don't you start? So we got nine now. <laughs> oh heck you're putting me on the spot here oh okay sorry you okay start. i'll yeah, start you start um, okay yeah. i'll start uh i don't remember if i said this last time but i love this program called cat beast party it's like a punk thing it's like a punk eclectic it's really fun it's just really fun 
Um, and I keep meaning to want to get into um, Chuck D's show. I think it's on Saturday nights, and I it just keeps slipping my mind for some reason. But I, I don't know a lot about rap, but um, Ursula was talking to me about Chuck D when he was um, visiting with us with the GRC, and I got one of his albums of er early Public Enemy albums, and I really liked it. She was right about it being, like, just really rich and, like, this rich tapestry and so it's like and plus seeing him talk really got me interested to hear more and since he's curating a show I thought that sounds fun to try um trying to think of any other new well we have a great show at KHOY called Don Alana Kitchen and it's really cute um we talk about recipes and Actually, I, I don't think they're on, they're not on Audio Port, are they? They're not on Audio Port. We should convince them to be on there. That won't help you. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'll talk to them because they're they, they're too they're too local, you know. I guess. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know. To be to be honest, they, they don't want to do it if there's no money in it. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kind of like you know, click and clack were for. Fixing cars. Yeah, they are. They are like click and clack. That's that's a really good analogy. Making, making food and talking about food. Yeah. And, anyway, I wish you could hear it. So that does not help. Okay, so uh, does anyone else uh, want to go next? Turn out. How do I fix it? <laughs> What's that? I said well, my you... casserole didn't turn out. How do I fix it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't do that part where they like call in with when they burn things. That would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, we should suggest a food fixing segment for their show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can hear it. KHOI is online, so it is. You can hear it. Anybody? That's can hear true. It. You can, can't you? Yeah. I'm writing down these suggestions. So, so okay, now so I, I can talk. So we have okay. we have uh, a show coming in. Lori heard, Lori heard about it last night, and, and maybe Mercedes, I think she was there. Um, there was a woman in 2005, a young woman, who rode three oceans by herself uh, to raise awareness about uh, contaminating the ocean and, and the environment in general. And so she's going to be doing a show coming into WPVM, and we'll be sharing it to Pacifica Network whenever it starts up in March. And uh, she's planning on having some well-known uh, people involved in um, the environment. Wow. So, so that's one that's going to be coming in. Yeah, she's got the Guinness World Record of uh, for women rowing three oceans, the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. Oh my goodness. That's pretty yeah. cool. That was, that was fierce. That is fierce. Is that gonna be like a documentary style or is that gonna be an ongoing, are you gonna be able to- be an ongoing, probably mm -hmm. half an hour every, I'm not sure yet, but um, but she she's well-known, internationally for being an environmentalist. That's exciting. Hey, Stephanie, I'm going to sign off. I want to watch the TV. Oh, I was just going to bring you in for a second. Do you have a second? Yeah, I have a second. <laughs> I remember, well, Davine's comment made me think of you're working on a show with someone who like climbs mountains, right? Right. How's that? I was just curious. How's that going? I haven't done much of it this week because I've been watching, you know, the impeachment thing, but it's going well. We're okay. gonna we're gonna be doing another show pretty soon. She's is she training to climb Mount Everest. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool to hear about yeah. that too. Yeah. Okay, well keep us updated and thanks for joining. Okay. I'm sorry I'm not saying the whole thing today. That's okay. That's that doesn't that's how it goes. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Okay.
Any other interesting shows people have discovered lately? Or will be discovering? <laughs> I just I really love um, uh, Classical oh. Tones, which is a, a show that comes out of KBBF Radio in Santa Rosa. And it's a classical music show that focuses on Spanish speaking composers. And um, the show is bilingual, it's Spanish and English. And it just, it just has a great sound. Um, uh, it's just a very, very elegant show. And the music is beautiful and the way he speaks is beautiful. And it just, the show just really swings. It's really great. That's nice. Is that the one you play? Do you play that on Sunday? Uh, we play it on Sunday and we play it on um, We yeah. play one hour of it on Tuesday morning and two hours. It's a good yeah. show for Sunday. Yeah, we've actually had some stores say that they play it in the store. Um, although I'm not sure that's legal. <laughs> I think, you, <laughs> I think you have to have a license to do that, right? I think. Anyway. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it's considered a performance, I think, if it's in a store. Anyway, I'm not sure about that, but I think so. Anyone else have any favorites? Or did Mercedes, did you have one that you wanted to share? Sure. Um, I was at the meeting last night for the DRC, and one of the shows that I shared is from NPR, and so it's available as a podcast, and it's called Rough Translation, and um, it is about race and gender and the economics, like the intersection and intersectionality, um, but they've mostly focused on lately the different things about what it means to be a multicultural person. Um, and I've, I've been loving that. And then I also wanted to tell you guys, I didn't say this yesterday, but um, some of my friends and I, a couple years back had this, it initially kind of started as a joke in our anarchism circles. Um, we were having an anarchist reading group and then, you know, discussing, um, things about anarchism as a philosophy. And I threw out, well, we should have a radio show called Anarchy Now as a joke about democracy now, but we could discuss, you know, anarchism and the privilege of anarchism and stuff. Well, now those friends are actually trying to propose that show as an actual thing. <laughs> I'm not involved because I'm on the board, um, but I think it's going to be really neat. And I think they're going to do some call-in features maybe and have interviews, um, but generally just bring it out of the chaos that is often associated with and into alignment with some classical anarchists and philosophers and theories. So anyway. Wow, that's really cool. I have a friend who's an anarchist and that's the first thing I learned that there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Yeah, it's funny. I actually personally identify with anarchism, um, but there's so many different types of anarchism because every single anarchist has a different version of what anarchism is. But then I'm in a bureaucracy as the president of the board and <laughs> agreeing to navigate on, with those rules. So it's, it's been interesting. Our course, or not our course, our university here, California State University, Pico, actually offered a course on anarchism and social movements a um, year and a half ago and I took that course. and really interesting stuff that's cool yeah you have to tell us if you guys get that show on the roll um uh laurie or paul or joseph do you guys have any favorite shows yeah i, I talk about a show it's not it's not a new show but uh, sort of like the show at kbbf which i've listened to a couple of times and i uh, agree with ursula it's a really great show. There's lots of other shows on that on that station that are um, really great. And we have one on Sundays that's a bilingual Spanish English um, jazz. Um, anything 
Latinx from Central America, South America, and uh, the host does interviews occasionally, and he does the program bilingually. He trans if he does an interview with somebody in Spanish, he translates it into English. He, if he does one in with somebody in English, he translates it into Spanish. Um, and he talks about the music from all over the Americas on his show. And, and that's been one that's been on a long time, but it's still one of my favorites, uh, partially because of the bilingual part of it, but partially because of the breadth of really great music that he finds. Mm, that's really cool. Do you remember what it's called? Uh, it's called The Trip. The Trip. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's see what it's. It's every other Sunday from uh, 1 to 3. That sounds nice. Um, Lori or Joseph? Any thoughts? I had a, a, a show that we are bringing back. Um, in, in Mercedes, that's why you're wearing the black. I got one of those black anti-capitalism t-shirts. Capital capitalism with those parentheses going the opposite way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. Um, anyway, we're, we're bringing back a, a program that was produced by uh, Milton Jamie Lee called Oyate Songs of the People. They're half hour programs where he went around to uh, different tribes on, uh, well, just about across the country. Uh, and he did interview with traditional singers, the real interviews, uh, where they also got to, to sing their songs. And sometimes there were groups, uh, two or three people. And uh, he came to our house one time and I had a couple of friends who were traditional, well, we're all traditional singers. And we, we did our own songs and did interviews about our lives and and things and then he edited it all down to um, 28 minute programs and so it's this i think he has 56 programs that in publication or and on audio i don't know if he's still doing it but we got the collection so we thought well why don't we bring these back on sundays on the, in a four o'clock hour as uh, we usually do i i do a friday edition that i i i do interviews of people doing good things in a community or people doing good things in their community. And I get their story. And I, I try to keep it into um, around 20 minutes and sometimes it goes half hour. So we, we put it in the four o'clock hour. So now we're gonna fill that hour with the uh, Oyate songs of the people. So we're having more voices of native people doing something, something that they're, they look forward to doing, they love doing. So, uh, that's, that's really cool. It sounds like, um, I mean, it sounds, it's a real record of, you know, tradition that, so, that you can keep that. Yeah. Yeah. It, like. it, it, it's nice uh, <laughs> because some of these people aren't with us any longer. Mm. So that, that's what's really yeah, nice about this. Really collection. valuable. It reminds right, me of, what's that? Stephanie, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of that. Appalachia, there's a there's a thing about Appalachia a story where they did that too. What are you thinking? I'm I'm thinking these would be really fantastic sprout shows Ooh. if you were willing to share them. Yes. What well, do you he's think, got a website. Joseph? Well, he, I, uh, yeah, um, you might want to talk with him, Milt Lee. Okay. Uh, go to a yate, songs of the people. So he he produces them. He he produces it. He does. Milt Lee does. So Milt is and his he wife, in, Jamie. Is he an audio port or does he have a web page or? Um... Uh, no, he's not on audio port. Uh, he, I think he's living in Kansas, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't talked with him in a long time. Uh, I, I do know that there is, he does have a website, and so Yate Songs of the People. There's several How do you shows spell? So you called just, Yate you just Songs have, of the People, but. You just have copies of the shows from before, right? Yeah, I've got CDs. Yeah. Well, I guess we'd have to, we'd have to get his permission if we wanted to use it now. So I guess it depends on whether he's still around or not, right, doing it. 
Well, I don't think he's still doing that show, but uh, yeah, I know he's still the producer of that show. Mm -hmm. How do you spell Yapi? Yape. Oyate. O Y A T E. Oyate. It's a Lakota okay. word. Yeah, we'll see if the, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Do you have any favorite shows, Lori? Pass it on to the next person. Um, not necessarily favorite shows. We've been working on getting um, our own producers back on the air, producing at home. So that's been a good thing. Um, we did have a local woman who was producing her own radio show online, and now we've got her on our station. Um, and I think uh, we're now her only distribution, so to speak, besides her, her website's music show. That's and then, cool. What kind of music does she do? Um, kind of a, I think a little bit of punk, uh, some indie. Uh, she's got um, producer Don Santera, who is local, who also had his own show and you know, it's it's the folks who have the means are the ones that aren't producing, which drives me crazy. It's like you have a you you have a studio, you run an audio studio, and you can't get us a show. Um, and we have a few others who also are in the same boat. And it's like just we have people who have very little technical skills who've managed to figure out how to produce their shows at home. So. Um, yeah, I haven't listened it to it to myself, but I've seen her social media and and have uh, have been trying to pick up on that. And then something new that we're playing this month, which we got from PRX, which is um, the black um, black radio telling it like it was a twenty fifth anniversary. Um, I think they broke it down into hour blocks, so we um, we just added that, and we've got gotten a lot of good feedback from it and also some local press um which is is always nice that's cool how long have they been around you said 25th anniversary it's a it's a it's kind of like a documentary so oh okay yeah it's called black radio telling it like it was um so it first was it first aired in 1996 and it was as a special and they uh, broke it down into six hours, six one hours for this year. And it's, um, it was a free uh, offer on PRX. We don't, we don't usually get a whole lot of stuff from PRX other than Folk Alley. Um, we had somebody local who wanted that on our, on our station. Um, and we're, we're looking to diversify some other options to fill out some of our programming now that, um, you know, when we first launched, the, our, our schedule was full because we had lots of local people coming in the studio and producing. Um, so that's one thing that's changed with COVID. Um, and one of the things we're, we're thinking about, or at least I'm thinking about, is uh, connecting more with um, Pacifica and also some of the services that I learned about at the GRC that you guys, you and Ursula talked about, because um, we're looking to cut costs on our streaming and and all of that, and I think, um, I think it would be good for some of our producers to have access to Audioport as well, and distribute their programs. We have a program that our board president does called Choose to Be Curious, and it's all about curiosity. It's a talk show, and it's also gotten her like she just spoke today at a local university, um, talking about curiosity, <laughs> and and you know she they were gonna give her a speaker's fee and she just told them, why don't you make it a sponsorship for WERA? Which was kind of cool. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Lori how, how, Lori, how long are your, if you have a real busy schedule, how long are your shows? And have, have you um, had to have some conversation, make some decisions about how long people's shows can be if you have a crowded schedule? Um, well, it's not as crowded as, as it used to be because of uh, the pandemic, but we have, um, 
programs anywhere from a half hour slot, which obviously you don't get the whole 30 minutes. We, we roughly make it 26 to 28. You know, we have that flexibility as a community station. Um, and our longest program is three hours because it's Mary Cliff and traditions. And I don't know if you're familiar with Mary Cliff, um, but she was on WAMU for a long time. She's been in the folk music scene for over 50 years. So she has a large following and they put their money behind it. <laughs> so if Mary Cliff wants three hours, we give her three hours on Saturday nights. Um, and she matches her donations. You know, she's been in radio for a long time. So um, that would be our longest program, but typically uh, music shows an hour to two hours. And we remind people that they don't own the time slot. And uh, if something comes up that is better for the station to move programming around, then that's, you know, within reason, we don't, you know, if somebody has a listenership, we're not gonna switch them just to switch them. Um, but people that are starting out, we always, you know, this is from our, you know, cause we're a public access TV station. Our focus has always been start small with something that you can manage. And then once you build up and you've got the, the knack of it, then, then expand to an, an hour or longer, but start with what you can do and, and go from there. So we try to we we try to make sure that producers are willing to make a commitment to producing regularly. And if they're not, then you know we just actually took two more shows and put them on hiatus because it's like you're not turning in shows regularly and the programming is stale and that's not fair to the listeners and it's really not fair to us. And if you're not gonna have this commitment, which we we totally get, you know everybody's life is all turned upside down. And for the most part, everybody's, you know, they get it <laughs> and they know that they haven't been fulfilling. You know, we have a, a producer agreement that they sign, which, you know, we don't have the infrastructure to, to you know, stay on top of, but, um, you know, for the most part, we just have the conversation. And then we try to work out if there's something that needs to change what's in the best interest first for the station and then try to accommodate anything else after that. Davine, I see you have your hand up. Is there any more thoughts on what Lori's talking about before we move on? I think her hand was up before I spoke. Oh, that's up. We'll get to everybody. I was wondering if people have some information about music rights when it comes to uh, people doing podcasting. Uh, if you, does anybody have any any idea of the legalities of that? And I'm not yeah, talking I do. about people, I, I do. people on the radio, I'm talking about people just doing musical podcasting. How do they work the licensing on that? They don't, it, it's, it's very cut and dry with podcasts. If you're if you don't have license free music, don't even do it. It's not well, that, yeah, the, and the reason that I ask because it gives if someone is is uh, just passionate about doing a podcast, then it, uh, then being on the radio opens the door for them to actually get their show out. That's the reason. That, um, my I know, but the, the, the here is is for for good programming to come to our stations. Because well, we, the, we're legal. I know, but the law doesn't care about all that. The bottom line is there is no legal way to podcast music that's, li that's licensed. Okay, so, but yeah, so I'm not making myself clear. So we have Spinatron and uh, Sound Exchange. So if someone records a show, and maybe it's not a podcast, but it's a recording of their show and they share it to us, then and not out on the internet but to us and then it goes out on our internet i think that's what i'm trying to uh clarify as at that point they're covered 
because you know, uh, for example, for example, the classical classical show. Well, we play the classical show. We play your classical show, and we play it on the air. But we also stream that program. And the question. I'm sorry to. I, I lost track of the question. I'm not making it clear, so I'll I'll just I'll just let it lie. Well, ask it again, because I, I I got distracted by the word podcast, which I don't think you're talking about podcasting here. Well, right? a lot of people want to do podcast and then they find out that they can't legally do it, but they really want to do a music show. So I think that it's an it offers them an opportunity to be legal if instead of calling it a podcast, they actually do a show in their home home studio or wherever they're doing it and submit it as a program. And then it can go out on our radio, on our broadcast, but also it can be distributed on the internet because we have Spinatron and Sound Exchange license. Yeah, yes, you can do that. Um, that's not podcasting. Right. Okay. So that's what I said. I think I'm, I need to clarify that that's not podcasting. It's uh, creating an audio file, which and it's putting the audio on the radio and online. Yeah. yeah. You can do, and you, you know, you should report it for the online part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's no problem. Okay. As well, we podcast it. Okay. Right, because you're talking about people who are drawn to making podcasts, but since that doesn't work because of the legality, you're like, here, this is an opportunity for you to do what you want. It's just a different platform. Yeah, that was my that was my question because we have some people who really want to do shows and they've found that or that we've come to realize that it's an advantage to offer them to be on the radio because then they can do legally do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and on the, the flip side of that, we've had some of our talk shows create their programs as podcasts after it's because they don't use music. They don't use licensed music. And then some of our music programmers who are who are new to all of this um, ask, well, how can I do that? And it's like, well, you right. can't. <laughs> right. And, you know, we've we've gotten some of our producers to upload their programs to Mixcloud, which is a third party site that that pays those license fees for um, people. It, it's an archive because it's not downloadable. To, typically a podcast is downloadable and you can't download music. So that's that's a way that we've worked around it. And then also just making sure that um, on our website, we're only featuring the, the most recent two weeks of any any given program to, yeah. to make sure with, with the licensing. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. It's like, well, I just, you know, cause everyone wants to be a podcast to be podcast famous. <laughs> and it's like- Right, you know, but it's interesting because um, what I'm learning is that the word, people have started to use the word podcast to mean a big, a much larger, group of activities than actual podcasting. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when people will say, I want to make a podcast, what they're really saying is they want to put audio online. They're not saying they necessarily that they really want to podcast it, but it, kind of the word podcast has come to mean any audio that's online. Right. And right. so and so sometimes when you know somebody says that, you know, I have to ask, well, what exactly, you know, do you want to do? Because it might be possible, like what right. Dean was saying, you know. So it's interesting. The word podcast we, we has kind a... of migrated. We, Just... we had a volunteer who had his own internet radio show. And he was getting listeners from Denmark and Germany, and he's giving us feedback. And so he did his own, he had his own license. So he, he didn't share it with us. So. <laughs> but I, I was I was curious how he did that when he's no longer with us, so I can't ask him. So, but, uh, so there's a legal way of doing this. Yeah, I think so I, there's a site called Live 365, which is a popular internet radio site. But the, you have to pay to use it. 
because of that licensing for, especially if you're going to play music. Um, yeah, you said something like you get paid a couple hundred dollars a year or something. I, I don't know. Or if I get. I'll have to yeah, look. I mean, if you've got the money to do that. <laughs> I mean, as we, as many of us know, the licensing, even just for a small radio station is, is a lot. Yeah, I really think that, you know, non-commercial radio stations should get a pass on that. I mean, we, we don't make any money from it and we promote them. So what's the deal? Yeah, and Spinit and Sound Exchange went up another 50 bucks this year. 550. Row, row. <laughs> it's not right. Yeah, and you know, that has a real impact on us for our talk, for our news programming. If they use any kind of music bed between, uh, between subject matter, um, then their archives are subject to the same licensing requirement as uh, a music program would be, which is a, a really problematic for a news for a news production to only be able to be up there for two weeks. Um, Ur Ursula, could you, for for at least my benefit anyway, um, not understanding quite the platform versus the legalities, um, explain a little bit about what a podcast. Um, is has been how people are, are sort of <laughs> are changing broadening it. <laughs> it because we yeah because we have somebody right now who has a podcast um a half hour show as a podcast that has come to the station that wants to broadcast it on the station and and i'm not quite clear on um how the station can broadcast this if we chose to um or if we can it's a podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can. You can. That's no. There's no problem there if you have his permission. Um, so a, po a a podcast is literally is an all podcasting is an alternative way of moving audio. Um, you know, we use electromagnetic wavelengths in radio. Um, uh, and in podcasting, it's um, data packages that are sent through through the internet, and it, it's not it's not data like it is online. It's a different way of moving it that makes it you know easy to um, to to move into um, you know archives in your cell phone or whatever, however you want to listen to it. So it's literally a different way of moving audio. And um, uh, it, it, I mean, I don't want to get too much into it because I'm not really qualified, but the, the image that I have that I think is basically correct, although probably not totally, um, is, you know, uh, you know how, how Google and other search engines, they develop like um, spider, spider, they call it spiderware, like, you know, a software that goes in and, and, and looks at other people's websites and gathers information, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? So it's essentially yeah. a use of that type of software so that if you have a podcast, basically if, you're, if your podcast is, is at a host, um, it sends out um, a signal to those, you know, to software that's, that's looking for that. And it says, I, you know, I have a show here and it's here, here, and here. And then the person that signs up for that the, in a sense, their their software is then geared to constantly uh, monitor uh, your 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 what your um, your website through what's called an RSS feed. And as soon as there's a new installment, it goes in, takes the uh, takes the data, and moves it into other people's cell phones or computers or whatever. So it's it you know it it's a it's a it's a type of um, broadcast. I mean, if you want to call it broadcasting, it's a type of broadcasting that uses that software that goes in and looks for data and then delivers it to another machine. So, um, does that make sense to you? So, I mean, it's a, it's just a different uh, yeah, it, way. It's, 
it's a different way of um, sending audio. And instead of electromagnetic wavelengths, you're using what they call RSS feeds, which is a communication system that you know tells this spyware, so to, uh, so to speak, that there's audio to be taken and then it goes and it takes it and moves it into you know, a cell phone or a, a, a computer. And, and so it's not the same as, um, you know, it's not the same as streaming and it's not the same as, um, you know, uh, uploading and downloading content. It's kind of, some, it's a different form of moving content through the internet. And so, so if his show is set up under that kind of a data system, but he wants to broadcast it on our station, if we can, if I'm understanding this, if we convert it to an MP3, then yeah. it's no longer going through that data system and it follows all the same broadcasting rules as what we would otherwise follow? Yeah, I mean, most, I think most podcasts are MP3s. I think they show up in your phone or your computer as an MP3. And so then when we do this from, say we do this with this guy or we do it from anybody who says, hey, I've got this podcast, but I want to broadcast it on your station, then, then we're um, assuming the licensing responsibility when we broadcast that. Is that how that works? For whatever uh, rules which there licensing, are. Which license? Our, our, our license is, is um, covering the, the music um, that's yeah. being put out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, I mean, the way you think about podcasting is that it's, it's very much like downloading, except that it's done for you automatically with this software that is constantly searching for content. That, that's the difference. And in fact, Audioport, you know, Audioport is a very old website. It was created in 2003. So, <laughs> None of this existed then, right? It was like nobody even uh, nobody even understood what Audioport was because people, the cloud hadn't been invented as a concept, so nobody could figure out what it really was. So, so Audioport, you know, originally you would just go in there and download something, like most, you know, like I do. But um, but then you know people started developing automation systems and wanting to automate, you know, stations wanted to start automating the downloading instead of um, them having to go and do it themselves. Cause a lot of stations are very small, don't have staff. And so right at that time, you know, podcast technology had been invented and it was largely ignored for many, many years. I mean, for a long time, nobody thought it was of any interest at all. But um, Pete, who was our webmaster, he realized that that could be used and so when people, when Pacific affiliates want to automate, you know, whatever programs they take from Audioport, they're essentially, it's, they're essentially using podcast technology. So, you know, so basically they sign up for that show and, and say, you know, we want to know when there's a new show from this particular, you know, say classical tones or, well, not classical tones because um, actually they, you can do it that way, but I mean, you know, so they, they basically are, they sign up the way a pod, somebody would sign up for a podcast in Audioport because Audioport is a, is a podcast host in a sense. And what makes it a podcast host is that it has an RSS feed attached to it, which sends out a signal and tells people what's in it. And the RSS feed is kind of our equivalent, you know, the equivalent of the you know my my electromagnetic wavelengths. It's the medium that tells people, oh, there's something out there, right? If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So so if our station were to um, have an RSS feed, uh, uh, yeah, that's a big project. That's <laughs> we just built a podcast uh, okay. host here for Pacifica, which you can have access to. And, and believe me, right, Stephanie, it was a big project. It's, it's not a small thing. And for us, it was relatively easy because we already had the software. I mean, Otis had already developed the software for Audioport and, and you know, moved it over to a new website. But it's a, it's a big undertaking, you know? And well, then yeah, and I wasn't, 
I wasn't thinking that we would do it, do it, but I, it was leading me to ask the question about that you had said initially there's no legal way um, to have um, licensed music via a po- to put it out at, via podcast. So does that change for a station that ha- or for Pacifica with an RSS feed? Does, That's does that- a really good question that I just raised myself when I, I don't know. I, I have to ask Otis if we, I don't know. That's a really good question. And I don't know the answer to that. It, I never thought of it, but now that you mention it, it could be that, that that's illegal and that we're doing something illegal. That's possible. I, I'm gonna look into that because that's a really good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's our, um, I know that we've been, we've been talking about our Pacificaster website for a while and just curious where our legal, we've been trying to iron out some legal stuff and just curious um, if we got any no, closer to where. No, this is the thing. My, Michael did send me a draft and I, I apologize. We had a death in the family and I've been out of commission for three weeks. So it's sitting in my inbox and I'm going to get to it now. I'm just kind of starting to get back into work. Right on. Your loss. Thank you. Yeah. It Grief was, um, is, is hard in quote unquote normal times, but even harder now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, this wasn't actually a COVID death. This was, in a way, it was worse. It was, um, my sister was a victim of um, glyphosate poisoning. Oh, no. Yeah. It's personal now between me and Monsanto. Oh, I didn't realize that. Wow. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Me too. Well, sending some love to you and your family. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cancer is an angry disease. It's Yeah. Well, she fought the good fight if anyone did. I mean, she was very adamant of just about her diet and her health and did everything she yeah. could. Yeah, the trouble was we just figured it out too late to, you know, and she kind of knew it. It was, if we had figured it out like five years ago, it would have been different. But at this point, it was too late. And it was kind of clear. Hmm. Well, all I can say is be be gentle with yourself. And yeah, and, and, I, I think- and I'll tell you, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get a test for toxicity in my body. I want to know now, you know, about that. I mean, I, apparently you can take a test for toxicity and, and I want to do that now. I want to know. So what was her exposure? Was it uh, Roundup or was something else? It, it's Roundup. Oh, wow. Did she work it's, on a farm or how did the... No, that, that's the thing that's really creepy about it. It's, she didn't really work on a farm, but I mean, we live in Iowa, so it's everywhere. Yeah. Right. And she swam in the, the rivers and lakes here. And I don't know, you know, it was interesting. I was talking to Michael White, who does Baroque and Beyond. He's a doctor in Wisconsin. And he gave me this whole really chilling explanation as a doctor why actually, um, you know, very slow um, exposure, indirect exposure is actually more dangerous than direct exposure because you you don't you don't really you don't realize what's happening and and the the toxins really entrenches itself in your cell over has time to really entrench itself and i you know so no she never really did anything i mean she once used roundup when she went camping but she wasn't like working on a farm or anything but i mean it's everywhere in iowa right yeah Wow. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah, it was kind of a wake up call for me. Yeah. So anyway, I have a friend, I have well, just a slight note. I have a friend whose mother is a similar situation and they're suing 
Monsanto in Kansas City. Yeah, we, we were actually contacted about a plus class action suit and we're, we're, you know, we're, but it's very difficult if you were not a farm worker, it's very difficult to, to make the case. I don't know if we'll really get anywhere, but we'll, we've joined, you know, we're in the class. I mean, my sister and I are going to carry it through, you know, but I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I kind yeah. of hijacked the conversation here. Oh, but that's, you know, that's this, the smaller, t at the yeah, smaller but, groups, we can kind of go on these avenues, you know, so it's part of your yeah, life. But, uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to, to, to share that of, you know, because that's some of the advice I've gotten from some of these groups is, you know, even, even in normal times, there are these things that we have to handle and work through that are challenging yeah. and then you add the pandemic and you know i'm one of those people who is like i didn't get this done i get didn't get this done it's like you know what life isn't normal right now yeah uh, you know and it's is it is it gonna burn down the building if i don't do this today no <laughs> no yeah well <laughs> yeah. and you know this is a unique time that everyone in the world is going through something you know yeah. yeah january was insane it was like really bad covid and then you know and then this you know the the cancer and then this stupid thing with the president you know and the election and the 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 whole steel thing you know the whole election thing it was just like holy crap you know like <laughs> anything else yes. <laughs> yeah like the outside world is of little comfort to me right now january right. from hell <laughs> january from hell no kidding it was just like you know you know my sister's like she's dying of lymphoma and she's like what did trump do today you know it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> no um that was four years of constant uh, gaslighting every day. Yeah, it was constant it gaslighting, really was. and and we've got we've got trauma from it. We've got post traumatic um, stress syndrome from that gaslighting, not only from him but from the people who support him who are complicit. Yeah. So you know, so on top of it being January from hell and your sister having a terminal illness, for God's sake, we've we've got some serious trauma it's yeah, everywhere no, i agree i do agree i think i think we all have a lot of we're caring a lot you know yeah just watching these hearings today is such a comfort to see people holding accountability oh my god just grateful for that well so, unfortunately yeah. i have to i have to take <laughs> off here yeah. um but i just want to wish everyone well and stay thank well you. stay safe thank you care and yeah, be gentle to yourself thank you i say I this it. as i'm trying to absorb it myself and practice yeah. it myself. i understand so, thank you yeah right. no you're right you're really right so i'll see you all next week okay bye -bye. all right thanks Lori. thank you bye bye and um We'll be, uh, I've been talking to some people. Thanks, Paul. And we'll have the, the, sh the, the show, <laughs> the meeting and, um, surveys coming up. Um, we're just trying to line up a day. I'm not sure if it'll be right away or in a couple weeks, but that's in the works. And so, okay. um, yeah. So and, thanks and, everyone for another great talk. Ooh, Paul. First of all, if I can, if I can impose on you um, via a text or or email um, about the legal question that I have, I may just call Michael Cousins and and ask him to. Um, um, but if you got ten minutes to discuss what our situation is, um, that would be sure. really nice. Sure, sure. I if I can, I'm not sure I'll have okay. the answer, but I I'm happy to do so. 
Yeah. Well, and it may just be pointing me in pointing me in a direction. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Sounds okay. good. Thanks, guys. Have a good rest of your Thursday. See all of you. Good yeah. to see you.